This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, they say it's better to give than to receive. However, you can do both with the United Way of Greater Hazleton. Welcome to your information station. I'm Ken Kara. If this is our first time meeting, it's nice to meet you. You can call me Kenny. It's cool. So is all of this information from FYI and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Donald Trump is coming back to our area. According to our media partner, the Standard Speaker, the Republican presidential nominee will hold another rally at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Wilkesbury Township on Monday. The campaign has not yet confirmed the event. We will have more details as they become available. A 31-year-old Ashland man has been sentenced for taking a gun near the White House back in May. Jesse Oliveri was sentenced today to eight months of confinement. He was also credited for time served. Frackville State Police have charged a couple from Schuylkill County. They say abducted and beat a man. 21-year-old Jordan Marie Stravinsky and 30-year-old Jonathan Thomas Ford, both from Monoy Township, are locked up in the Schuylkill County prison, unable to post bail. Troopers allege that the two abducted a man at gunpoint in Union Township near Ringtown on Thursday. The victim, a 33-year-old man, was later found some distance from his property with major injuries. State police ask anyone with information information to call them at 570-874-5300. The trial of 27-year-old Tiffany Timko will get underway on October 17th. Timko is accused of hitting and killing 32-year-old Betty Sokolich with her car in Scranton and then fleeing the scene. It happened in February of 2015. She remains free on $75,000 bail. Well, how would you like to win a two-year lease on a new car? That's one of the many incentives for qualifying participants in the United Way of Greater Hazleton's 2016-17 annual campaign. We are grateful to the Hazleton Automobile Dealers Association. That's Burger Family Dealerships, Barber Ford, Independence, Toyota, Fairway Motors, also Tunnison's and Harry's You Pull It are the organizations that together sponsor the opportunity for a United Way contributor to win a two-year lease on an automobile or that winner also has the option of taking six thousand dollars in cash and using that toward the purchase of a new or a pre-owned vehicle from one of the participating dealers. Literally for the last 19 years this incentive partnership has helped to drive the United Way campaign and our campaigns are better because we can offer this exciting prize. Well, we are the community. Uh, the burgers have been here for a long, long, long time. I think it's like 75 or 80 years. And we want to help the community. The community is, is our bread and butter. And without uh, Pat and his staff helping out those in need, we wouldn't have a community. And we're real grateful to have the United Way. I would also like to add that we have a lot of other prizes in this partnership. Of course, everybody knows about the year's worth of Jimmy's Hot Dogs. We have new prizes this year uh, from two new businesses in the community. Antonia's Jewelers and Gifts has given us a beautiful piece of jewelry that's going to be part of the incentive, raff, incentive raffle. And our friends, the Lagana family at the G Plus Deli in Drums, another new business, a year's worth of hoagies or submarine sandwiches, depending on where you come from. And there are many more, too numerous to mention right now. Hoagies and hot dogs, that's amazing. Now, to be eligible for the prize drawing, you must pledge at least $2 a week for this year's campaign. That will get you one chance at the prizes. $3 a week gets you two chances, and $5 a week gets you three chances. Pat Ward did the math for me, so that means the minimum donation to enter is $104. For more information, go to unitedwayhazelton.org or call 570-455-9515. The process continues to work out the transportation troubles plaguing the Hazleton Area School District. FYI's Lisa Sugart has the latest. I'm pleased to welcome back Dr. Craig Butler, who is the Superintendent of Schools for the Hazleton Area School District. Dr. Butler, I know you've been uh, very forthcoming in sitting down and talking with us about a, an issue that has been plaguing the district since the start of this school year, that being the busing situation. Are we getting it resolved this week or where are we at? 
Great question, Lisa. We uh, have had extensive conversations administratively, but also with our school directors. And uh, as recently as last week, uh, our plan at this point is that we are still adjusting routes. Now, you might say, why is that such an expansive process? We have 66 total routes. What I've learned through this process is when you look at a route, you're not talking of one sheet of paper. You're talking multiple sheets of paper. Uh, and each route is very intricate. It's time by the minute. There are numerous stops. Um, the passageway between stops and through the route is important. So when we say revise routes, this is an extensive process. Transfinder, the company we've been uh, contracted with and, and working with all along, is uh, showing their cooperation uh, completely. Uh, we have one person that's dedicated uh, strictly to Hazleton in the last three or four days working with our supervisor and our main uh, bus contractor to revise those routes. Now, given that, once that process is completed, we're going to review uh, bus passes, which is a critical part of it. Uh, in that, each student who uh, is an eligible rider needs to have an AM and a PM route. What happened before is many of our students received bus passes. They were not only inaccurate, they didn't have morning and afternoon routes. And some of the routes were uh, very uh, bizarre in, in the way they were placed and uh, situated according to where the residents uh, exist for that particular student. So us making sure that the bus passes are as accurate as possible is a very important step for us, Lisa. We don't want to send these bus passes out and have tremendous inaccuracies again. We, we realize we've lost the faith of the community at the beginning of the year with regard to busing. We're working to reestablish that. And this process here in the next few days is critical. Um, you had done this originally in hopes of saving money to try to consolidate the routes. So have we lost what we thought we saved or where are we at financially? Well, Lisa, we think we're still on track in that regard. We have reduced the number of routes uh, down to 10 uh, at the beginning of the year. We think we're going to have to add back as many as three, but still we're uh, sizably below where we were last year. The ridership is uh, very much a higher uh, percentage of ridership on all the buses. You can make an argument that because of that, some of the routes have slowed down and students are getting home later. We understand that. We recognize that. We're working on that. What is the status, I guess, of looking at this so it never happens again? I know I saw that people came out to the last school board expressing concerns, school directors concerned, obviously you're concerned. Is there uh, an investigation into this so to see what went wrong and how to stop it? Well, I think that's a very insightful question on your part, Lisa, and it's something that I've thought about as superintendent many times over the past weeks. Never do we want to re revisit this or have this occur again. <clears throat> I think the difference that I see is, and I shared this uh, media source just a couple of days ago, what we did here is we created a brand new district, if you will, busing. Speaking of busing, we, we, event, we essentially scratched what was in place, we started over, we built new routes, and we rebuilt the city, if you will, in terms of uh, busing, school bus uh, routes, and, and so on. Of course, we'll have new students come in that perhaps may not be in an, on an existing route, but that's a minor problem. We can add those, those students quickly and efficiently. But never again, hopefully, will we ever have to rebuild the system like we did this year. All right. Going through some growing pains with busing in the Hazleton Area School District, thank you to Dr. Butler for coming in and providing us with the latest update. Thanks, Lisa. The Hazleton Area High School will host a college fair this Thursday. More than 50 colleges will be on hand to provide information for students and the general public. This is a great opportunity for some of our students who would otherwise maybe not have the means to travel to universities for an official visit to experience it here on, on our home front. And, uh, Representatives from the college will be talking about waiving application fees for stop-by visits, scholarship opportunities, um, hints about filling out applications, uh, free, free uh, financial aid 
uh, and other opportunities for students that they might otherwise not uh, be accustomed to or otherwise know uh, through their own experience. The College Fair is Thursday from 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. and noon until 2 p.m. at the Hazleton Area High School. It is open to the public. Coming up next on FYI, for, um, coming up this week, it will be Fire Prevention Week starting on Sunday. We'll talk with a member of the Beaver Meadows Fire Department all about it next. In sports, we'll talk about everything from the Schuylkill League Championship to the Ryder Cup with Marion Golf Champ Albert McFadden. FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Over $7,000 in prizes are up for grabs at the designer purse and UGG bingo to benefit Brandon's Forever Home in Hazleton. The bingo takes place Sunday, November 20th at noon at the Freeland Event Center, 526 Fern Street in Freeland. Tickets are $25 in advance, $30 at the door. Sponsors and volunteers to work the event are also needed. For tickets or information, call Joyce at 570-401-9633. This Sunday will kick off National Fire Prevention Week, October 9th through the 15th, and one fire company in our area is holding a special event to mark the occasion. The Beaver Meadows Volunteer Fire Company will be hosting its first ever Fire and EMS Day this coming Sunday. Patrice Veet is a fire police lieutenant with the fire company. This is a great idea. You want the whole community to come out. So what triggered the fact that you're doing this for the first time ever? Well, we usually do the fire prevention in our firehouse, but this year someone had asked us to do something a little different. So we decided to see if we can get other companies to come down and see if we can get also the medevac helicopter to come, which they are. Um, it will be held on the 9th from 1 to 3 at Lake Marie, um, the baseball field, because we have to be able to land the helicopter. We will have uh, American Patient Transport Ambulance down, the Beaver Meadow Fire Company, uh, the fire, p the police officers. Um, we will also have Hazel Township bring their tower down. Um, so hopefully everyone can come out and visit with us. We'll have snacks and goodie bags for the kids. Um, this way we can also do our fire prevention that day. Um, and it will be a fun day for the kids. So hopefully everyone can come out and visit. Now, the, the theme and the name of yours, don't wait, check the date, replace smoke alarms every 10 years. I guess that's the theme for Fire Prevention Week right. this year. So it's important that people pay attention and be prepared, heaven forbid, in the wake of a fire. True. We've seen a lot of fires, and some of the things could have been prevented if they had smoke alarms. And now they have new ones out that last 10 years, so you don't even have to replace the battery. But it's good to have them on every floor of your home so that you are alerted to this. How important is it also that all of the firefighters and emergency responders will be there, that people get to talk with them one-on-one? -on -one? It will be. Um, our guys know how to explain how to install the fire uh, alarms, and they will put them in if need be. Um, they also can tell you where to get them, that they're the ones that last you longer. They'll help the elderly. Um, and they'll show them the vehicles, open the doors, the same with the ambulance. All the equipment will be open along with the helicopter and they'll be there also to let you see the helicopter. All right, so it sounds like a very fun way to get out a very important message. Again, it's taking place this coming Sunday and that is October 9th, the kickoff of Fire Prevention Week. And it will be taking place from 1 until 3 p.m. at the baseball field at Lake Marie in Beaver Meadows. Please come out for this wonderful and educational event. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. 
It looks like a nice couple of days heading our way. We may see some rain on Saturday, but it doesn't seem like anything major right now. Here's our local forecast from the National Weather Service tonight will be mostly cloudy, well below 50 degrees with an east wind around 6 miles per hour. Wednesday is sunny with a high in the mid 60s. We'll have a calm wind in the afternoon. Wednesday night clear with a low of 47 degrees. Thursday another calm wind, sunny with a high near 68. Thursday night, mostly clear, low of 50 degrees. Friday will be up near 67 degrees under sunny skies. Friday night, partly cloudy, low of 51. Saturday, 40% chance of rain, mostly cloudy, high of 65. And then Saturday night, 50% chance of rain, mostly cloudy. Our low will be 40 degrees. Let's check out our home of the week from the beautiful Eagle Rock Resort. It's a cozy ranch with three bedrooms and three baths, finished basement with a bar, large living room with two sliding glass doors to take advantage of a great view of the mountains and ski slopes. Comes fully furnished for $165,000. Contact Paul for more information. And before we go to break, it's your midday winning lottery numbers. Pick 2, 1, 1. Pick 3, 5, 2, 6. Pick 4, 2, 9, 7, 4. And pick 5, 2, 5. A lot of golf talk when we come back on FYI. This is FYI News 13 Sports. going to be honest I didn't watch any of the Ryder Cup this year I do know the US won and I do know the team had great hats I'm thinking of buying one the gray one with the USA on front and the stars on the side sick I have been following the Marion golf team this year though I also like their hats they won this year's Schuylkill League championship and I was in hometown earlier this week to interview a member of the team this is Marion's Albert McFadden. He came in um, to school today. You brought the medals with you, said you didn't have a shirt. I said, wear them, man. Yeah. You know, you yeah, earned these hard. recently. Second time being an individual golf champion in the Schuylkill League. And then Marion captured also the team championship in the Schuylkill League. We're going to talk about that, but it was also a big weekend at the Ryder Cup. Albert, I want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, you told me you're a passionate golf fan. So where were you watching the Ryder Cup? Like, were you all the whole way? I was watching it at work, actually, at the Valley Country Club. Me and my boss, we were watching it together. And it was very exciting, I thought. It was fun. Great Sunday. What was the highlight of the tournament for you? Like, what do you what do you remember from it? Oh, McElroy and Reed. That was the best match I thought. And then Mickelson and Garcia. They combined for 19 birdies, which is unbelievable in itself. Yeah. If you were gonna play in the Ryder Cup and you could pick any American golfer, who would you want to be paired up with? It doesn't even have to be current. I mean, any time. Okay. In the foursome matches, I would actually like to be paired with Arnold Palmer. Really, from PA, two Pennsylvania guys going at it against two Europeans. I think that'd be amazing. How much did you know about Arnold Palmer as a golfer? I knew a little bit about him. I didn't follow up that much about him. I know he makes a great beverage. <laughs> I know that for sure. But all in all, I heard he was a passionate golfer, amazing player. So it's very sad to the sport. Give me your background a little bit. To come in as a freshman and win the Schuylkill League was impressive. So how, when did you start golfing? I mean, you're working down at the Valley Country Club. What's your background a little bit? My background is I started golf when I was four. That's what my mom told me. So <laughs> with little plastic clubs. So I started playing. I didn't. I don't play that many tournaments. I play occasionally here and there, but I just work on my game a lot. Practice. That's it. That's all you have to do. When did it go from maybe being I'm playing with plastic clubs and a hobby to okay, let's get serious about yeah, this? That was around I'm gonna say 13 or 14 maybe, and I started playing more and more, getting more competitive, playing down in Philly, all that. Yeah, and talk about the team accomplishment too. Me and Nick Krasinski finished in the top four. Yeah, he qualified for districts, so that's good. And then the team was just great. I knew we were going to make districts because we were already set, but to win that even set us more. And as a program here, how much did, did Marion really help you? You seemed like a good golfer before, but I mean, you have a coach who's been doing this for a long time. How much has being part of this team helped you out? Very, very much. I want to thank Mr. B for all he did and all he did to help us, make us better, better as a person, better as a player. What's the strongest part of your game? I'm, I focus a lot on my short game. The long game could come in here and there, but you got to focus on the short game. That will make you score around anywhere. Tell me about Nick a little bit. What's he like as a golfer? You guys will go out to districts, I guess, individually. What's he like? He's, he's great. Great as a partner, great as a friend. Anything you need, go to him. He'll help you. He'll help me. It's ever. We work great as a team. What was your best round this year? Other than I know you won the championships, what was your best round? This year? 70, one under par. That was against Pine Grove at Boom Mountain View Golf Course. So that was a great round. I had a putt for 69 at the end and just missed. But hey, 70 is still a great round, I thought. Your favorite hole this year? What's your favorite hole in general, just playing around here? Like if you had to pick the courses you guys go to, what's your favorite? Favorite hole? 
Ooh, that's a tough yeah, one. Yeah. I don't know, actually. I, I like Schuylkill Country Club as just a course in general. I think that's a really nice golf course, but I don't, I don't have a favorite hole, really. So never thought what, of that. What's practice going to be like now as you guys get ready to go into districts? What, what will you guys do? What do you, what do you do? kind of focus on? No, it's going to be very tough. We're going to you know, focus very hard. We're actually playing a practice round on Wednesday down at Locust Valley, so that's a good you know, little prep for Moravian, but we'll see what happens. We'll keep you updated on McFadden and the Colts as they take a shot at States. Well, next week on FYI, we'll talk with Marion Volleyball's Jasmine Mooney, who recently earned her 500th kill. Mooney was busy on Monday, adding to her career kill total. This is the FYI Standard Speaker scoreboard. She set a school record with 35 kills in one match in the Phillies' win over rival Nativity. Marion was down twice in the match, but won the fourth and fifth sets. The win gives them a two-game lead in Division IV of the Schuylkill League over Nativity. Gian Donna Agosti had 55 assists for Marion. Miranda Antigua had 18 kills. Miranda Antigua had 18 kills and 7 aces. MMI lost to Nana Cope. Dana Corrado had 10 kills. Allison Francis had a hat trick for Dallas in their win over Hazel Tenaria in girls soccer. Tamaqua fell to Blue Mountain. The Tamaqua boys won thanks to goals from Chris Miller and Riley McHugh. The Hazel Tenaria boys water polo team went 1-1 one one at the Pennsylvania State Novice Tournament. The girls lost their two matches at the tournament. Let's finish with a bang and some big local golf news. News, MMI's Jessica McClellan had the lowest girl score at the pre-District 2 golf tournament. She'll head to the District 2 championships with MMI's George Palermo, who was second in the AA tournament. MMI's Morgan Long, Eric Dagenhart, and Doug Janetti will also go to the District championships. Three Hazel Tenaria golfers also qualified for the AAA tournament, Brady Antolik, Frank Sarach, and Jordan Pick. At the District 11 qualifier, North Schuylkill's Jordan Donmoyer was fourth in the AA standings. Monoy area's Josh Chikevich was sixth. Both will be going to the District 11 championship. Well, that's all the sports we have for today. Up next, it's the Social Report after this word from Bottlenecks. Stop in Bottlenecks on Tuesday for their traditional bone-in wing night. 50 cents a wing. Add a small order of fries for only $1.50. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, happy 23rd birthday to Tina and Shannon Bush. This was comes with love from Mom. In our Talk of the Town report, Holy Trinity Orthodox Church, 223 South Kennedy Drive in McAdoo, will be having a pro and Halushki sale Friday, October 7th from 10 a.m. to 5.30. Please call ahead to secure your order, 570-929-2179. Our next announcement, the Tamaqua Area High School Senior Class will be hosting the second annual Superurban 5K and Fun Walk on Saturday, October 8th at 9 a.m. at the high school. Registration begins at 8. There will also be a Chinese auction, lots of snacks, and a bounce house. All proceeds benefit two causes, the Thelma Urban Memorial Scholarship Fund and the Sean and Violet Urban Scholarship Fund. And finally, Holy Rosary Parish will be hosting a free community luncheon Saturday, October 8th from 10.30 a.m. to noon at Catholic Social Services in Hazleton, 214 West Walnut Street. All are welcome to attend, and the parish would like to thank the Hazleton Rotary Club and the Weinberg Northeast Regional Food Bank. For more information, just call 570-455-6390 at tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Peter P. Andrasco Sr. of Drums, friends may call Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Betty M. Harkins Palmer of Clares, Services are Thursday at 9 a.m. from the John J. Pustai Funeral Home. Friends may call Thursday from 8 to 9 a.m. Elizabeth R. Grimm of Sugarloaf Township. Memorial service is Friday at 10 a.m. at the Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church. Friends may call Friday from 9 to 10 a.m. The Harmon Funeral Home is assisting the family with the arrangements. And Richard T. Buzkowski of Eagle Rock. Memorial Mass is Thursday at 10 a.m. at the St. John Bosco Roman Catholic Church. Friends may call Thursday from 9 to 10 a.m. at the church. The Harmon Funeral Home is assisting the family with the arrangements. No Football Friday feature on Friday because we're going to have some Madden Madness as the Cubs get ready for their first game in the postseason. We'll see you tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone.